they'll give. Why? Because people want to give where the Lord's working. Amen. And that, that just, I mean, that sets the tone for every worship service. We, we do a lot of baptisms, and we celebrate every one of them. We don't rush through them. You know, I've, I've, I've attended some churches that are rather large, and they have a big band. And they're like numbers, you know. They're just swishing them in and out of there. But we don't. We slow down. We, we celebrate what God has done in this person's life. And uh, we, don't, we, don't, we don't hold them all together. Last week I baptized one person. This week I'm going to baptize one person. In fact, I say stretch them out so that you're always doing it. I don't know why. We, well, we only want to get wet once a quarter. So we, you know, we hold these people and then we do a, a big thing. So uh, do it as often as you can. Any other questions? My time is up. And, uh, you know, I had some more. But really, I, I, you know, this is just about doing it. Finding a way that you can make it work in your context. If you will commit to do it, I know God will bless you. God will bless what you do. Will every meeting you'll baptize 10 or 12 or 15? No. And you might have some meetings where you don't baptize anybody. You know what we do when we do that? We schedule an extra meeting that year. That's what we do. Because if we wanted to win 100 people and we were going to get them in, not in eight meetings or seven meetings or however many, and one comes up zero, we've got to do another meeting. And we've had, we've had some meetings where we haven't baptized anybody. But the very next meeting, we did. It doesn't mean we failed. It doesn't mean it doesn't work. It just means, for whatever reason, it wasn't time. Or I, 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 for, I really believe this. It wasn't that God wasn't ready. And it wasn't that we weren't ready. It's that some that God was talking to weren't listening. And we're going to give them another chance. So that, that is what we have found. I believe in all types of evangelism. I believe in personal evangelism. We do a lot of it at, at our church. It's a great thing when we see that happening. But we cannot just uh, work that one that one method. We've got to do the public evangelism. Just out of curiosity, anybody here one to the Seventh-day Adventist Church do public evangelism? Ten percent? You know, in my congregation, I ask that question, you know, most of the hands will go up. I, I believe it is still, it's, let me just say it this way, it's how our church started. Nobody can argue that. We were a prophetic movement. Not just born of prophecy, but born in prophecy by preaching the Adventist message. My Baptist uh, colleague that rents my church looked at me one day and he said, you got the greatest gimmick I've ever seen. I said, well, I wouldn't call it a gimmick, but it is a pretty good way of reaching people for the kingdom. Bill, can I get you to email me your sermon schedule? You may. I'll share it with Pastor. You may. And I'll, and I'll say this because some have asked. But I'll share anything I have. I've stolen my sermons from, from other people. Uh, mo mo most of what I have came from Gerard Deese. I don't know if you know Gerard, but Gerard was a great preacher. A great preacher. actually graduated at Oral Roberts University. They say he, the entire New Testament and much of the Old Testament had been committed to memory. Powerful preacher streaming just 